Welcome to the Small Acreage Simple Steps video series. This series is presented by the Washington State University Extension and is designed to help small acreage landowners to better manage their Clark County property. Raising animals is an enjoyable part of owning acreage. Properly managing manure can benefit you and your land. Proper management includes regular collection, storage, and disposal of livestock manure. Managing manure appropriately will reduce the volume of material by up to half, reduce parasites, pests, and weeds, and save time and money. Improperly managed manure presents a potential source of pollution to drinking water sources such as a well. Manure provides a breeding ground for flies and bacteria which can cause disease and illness in your animals. Nutrients and bacteria from manure can also harm fish and wildlife if they wash into streams. Overall, proper manure management benefits your animal's health, water quality, soil fertility, and the general aesthetics of your property. Once collected, you will need a place to store the manure until you are ready to dispose of it. Consider how much space you'll need and a location that will be convenient. What we're using for a composting our manure, it's a 24 by 36 foot pole building. It's located where it is because uh, it's one of the few flat spots on this property that was big enough to, to site it. Most of the rest of the property is, is pretty hilly. I'd like to say that there was all kinds of research that went into sizing the bays uh, and coming up with this particular eight by 12 configuration. But uh, in, in reality, it was this is how much room we had for the building. Uh, and 8 by 12 was a, con a convenient size to construct in terms of the materials that were available. Composting manure speeds up the natural decomposition process that breaks down the manure and bedding materials. So one of the things we've been working on is, uh, is the whole issue of manure management. These units are made out of, out of pallets. We have chicken wire on the inside of them and uh, basically we have a, a, essentially a fence split in half which we use to break up the manure as it comes in. Uh, we basically uh, put them together and, and screw them together so that they come apart really easily so when we want to actually remove the manure after it's composted we can actually take it apart and people can pick it up or we can use it on our own garden. Decomposition depends on many factors, including the size of the pile, the amount and type of bedding, and how well the pile is maintained. Although composting manure takes more effort than just storing manure, the benefits often outweigh the extra effort. With money from, from NRCS and the uh, Conservation District money, it was built as a dry stack building, but then we thought as long as we have this great big building, let's actually do some composting of the manure so we built the three bins along here depends on what how many horses we have if we're using all three bins right now we're just using two we used to buy its wood shavings over the years it became more and more difficult to uh, to source that then so we switched to pellets which are essentially kind of uh, just like a wood stove pellet they make great bedding material because they're very absorbent um, and it doesn't take a lot of pellets. I like them for two reasons, because it's like cleaning a cat litter box. It's really easy to clean because they're small particles, and then because they're small particles, they do break down and even out nicely in the composting process. We dealt primarily with the Clark County Conservation people. They were the ones that were administering the grants, and those were, they were the people that we dealt with all the time in getting it built. Creating an ideal environment in your compost pile requires adequate moisture, oxygen, temperatures between 130 and 150 degrees, and a 25 to 1 ratio of carbon to nitrogen in the composting materials. Depending on your bedding material, you may need to add some green materials rich in nitrogen, such as grass clippings or coffee grounds. Be sure to mix all materials together well so they are evenly distributed. The proper carbon to nitrogen ratio will ensure the microorganisms decompose the manure and other materials into a valuable resource. I have also tried different aeration schemes. I've used uh, perforated pipe that I've embedded in the units that allow airflow in, where the pallets uh, allow a lot of airflow up through the manure. 
to compost efficiently, maintaining moisture and oxygen levels is important. Covering the compost pile keeps it from getting too damp in the winter and too dried out in the summer. Also, runoff from uncovered manure may pollute nearby water sources. A rule of thumb is to keep the pile as damp as a wet, wrung out sponge. The microorganisms also require oxygen to break down the materials efficiently. Turning the pile either by hand or with a tractor adds air. Maintaining moisture and oxygen will help the pile heat up to kill parasites, pathogens, and many weed seeds. The Clark Conservation District has a manure exchange program that links livestock owners with people who want to compost. They also have a small manure spreader available for use free of charge to Clark County residents. To get more tips, ideas, and suggestions for managing manure on your small acreage property, contact the Small Acreage Program at 360-397-6060, extension 5729, or the Clark Conservation District at 360-883-1987, extension 110. The Small Acreage Program is a partnership between WSU Clark County Extension and the Clark County Clean Water Program. Clark Conservation District promotes conservation, protection, and restoration of renewable natural resources within Clark County. Landowners work voluntarily with district staff to receive on-site technical assistance. Funding for this project has been provided in part through a grant to the Department of Ecology from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The Department of Ecology allocates and administers funding for this project. The contents of this document do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of either the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency or the Department of Ecology, nor does the mention of the trade names or commercial products constitute endorsement or recommendations for their use.